Hey guys, Puppy's World here once again, and I've got um, a new video that's going to be part of my installments that equal like probably five hours of filming, but um, I'm getting this done. I'm doing how to, you know, set up surround sound receivers, and um, so let me get into simply what I've got going on here. I've got several different setups that I'm doing on surround sound receivers. Let me uh, pop you on real quick. Please get off of the Emotiva amplifier. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and power you on analog wise here. Drawing 0.5 amps. We're coming in at 121 volts. That's pretty good. Uh, so we're going to see what we get here. We're all hooked up to the surge protector, of course, as you could just hear everything click kind of on. We've got a Parasound preamplifier right here. I bought another Emotiva Base XA300, of course, to go to the Marantz SR7010. Got the Emotiva Phono preamp right here, and um, I'm going to be adding a Project Debut Carbon here, not the Project Debut 3 anymore. Um, so, okay, while Kitty's on my lap, I'm going to go ahead and quickly power this guy on drop them down and I'm gonna talk about um, I'm gonna talk about um, you know Ampasign here <clears throat> and I'm gonna run through kind of a virtual little uh, instruction manual if you will because setting up the surround sound receivers I did a video on wiring today I talked about how um, you know um, I'll post that soon but I talked about how running a small magnet connected to your speaker wire and making a slit in the carpet kind of here I know it's kind of dark guys but um you know, I talked about making a small slit in the carpet and um, running your speaker wire underneath the carpet with a small magnet affixed or adhered to the speaker wire and also um, to the external of the carpet, the exterior I mean, and running the magnet through the carpet kind of like that. Just a small little tip or trick I've found to kind of run speaker wire underneath carpet and stuff like that if you can't uh, go into the other room or um, below the floor here as I have in the basement and run them that way. So, okay, I'm going to pop my uh, Sony television on real quick guys. And, uh, well, I'm going to use the, Mar the Marantz remote to do so. Bam. It's smart learning, by the way. So you just hold it up to it, and it'll do that. Um, one of the other things I like about the Marantz receivers, though, guys, is that they uh, don't have anything to screw around with audio return channel, HDMI-type stuff with uh, audio hitting the TV speakers and stuff. So normally when setting up a surround sound receiver, you would have uh, problems, you know, with the optical output and the digital coax output to... Um, you know, to uh, display sound through the TV speakers as well. Uh, that's annoying as hell, and um, of course no one wants to achieve that when they're setting up surround sound receiver. They don't want both audio coming out of the TV speakers and the, you know, stereo speakers. So, um, Marantz does a really good job of when hooking up HDMI. Um, they don't uh, run into that issue at all, especially with an audio return channel. But you don't have to do that as the uh, NR1606 in my bedroom um, works just fine on an HDMI connection, no audio return channel, and uh, no problems whatsoever with hearing TV audio, it switches right away. However, I've got an interesting hookup right here, and the hookup that I've got, sorry guys, uh, the hookup that I've got right now is uh, pre-out, um, out of the Marantz SR7010, so, so that way I can put a turntable uh, right, uh, you know, connected to any of these guys, but more or less connected to the Marantz, a turntable, because it's got a phono amplifier preamp on board. So, I would be essentially, theoretically, connecting a turntable to my Marantz SR7010, as I did today. And um, it can be complicated, guys, using the pre-out section of this amplifier. That is why I'm going to run into the setup menu here and give you kind of a virtual little, bam, um, you know, virtual little rundown of the instruction manual on the amp assign section of it, as if you were going to do it in, you know, the, the entire manual. He would be here for hours. But, um, okay, using the pre-out of this guy, these can get difficult. And the NR1606 has a pre-out, too, and I'll combine these two at some point, as I have before. That's actually amazing, because you're enabling two Dolby Atmos and DTSX uh, processors with um, each other. So you got a 7.1 in the bedroom, uh, you know, with the NR1606, and a 13 channel processor on board here. So, <laughs> as you can see, that's a lot of speakers. Um, and uh, there's some cool stuff you can do with this Marantz NR1606. And one of the things I've done is um, upgraded it with Oro 3D. And with Oro 3D, you can actually have five height channels alone. Five height channels. Just a little hint or tip or trick, I suppose, to utilize all five height channels. You'd actually be going out of the um, subwoofer outputs. I'm not shitting you. You'd be going out of the subwoofer, you know, outputs on the back of this thing, as it's got two, of course. We've got two subs, an SVS sledge sitting there, and a Validine 12 over there. So, 
Um, this is the room I prefer listening to, uh, you know, LPs anyways in, as they sound amazing on these SVS speakers. However, I'm going to quickly talk about um, your amp assign options to use the pre-out, as when attempting to do that today, guys, pre-out to a Parasound pre-amplifier and then variable connection out from the Parasound to the Emotiva amp. We could even go fixed out of the Parasound back into the Marantz somehow into a different input, but that would not be utilized playing with one uh, record player. You'd have to have like an analog input off of your cell phone, say, or a digital, you know, stream direct type deal. Um, from a phone, and then it would be going out of the Marantz, into the Parasound, out of the Parasound, into the Emotiva, but also out of the Parasound fixed, back into the Marantz. It wouldn't work that way, so um, we'll have multiple different configurations like that set up, but more or less, I'll wait till I combine the NR1606 until I kind of talk about the Ampersign options you got with this. So, um, I'm going to go here and, and, and go into this as you cannot just set up um, analog outputs right out of the pre-out setting right away. Um, your first kind of setting for audio um, is, you know, more or less all the adjustments. Uh, however, you're going to have to go to speakers. You, you know, you should do your calibration, of course, with your microphone. It allows like six different placements of, you know, ear, ear listening uh, positions. However, I'm going to go into amp assign here real quick. And I love Pioneer's and Marantz's uh, on-screen display or graphical user interface, so have you. And, um, you know... I did a, a video earlier with the misses on the toroidal transformers in uh, those emotivas and stuff and how they're becoming so uh, powerful and popular and price effective at like a three $400 price range for 150 watts root mean squared. It's essentially because of people like Dixieland Farms and Subwoofer 101 who are doing all these videos that give credit to these companies that allow them to create such powerful transformers and power supplies, switchable mode power supplies and the toroidal transformers, you know, that um, drop them down entry level equipment into this uh, audiophile grade uh, stuff. So guys, the first setup that you're gonna wanna do or the most common setup that's gonna be available is gonna be an 11.1 .1 channel setup. Um, that's not how I have mine set up, but that's what it's gonna come right out of the box with. That allows you to use the nine channel power amplifier inside the Marantz and an external power amplifier connected to the pre-out to play back, you know, up to 11.1 .1 channels. Not two though, not 11.2, 11.1. Um, you are capable of connecting speakers for up to 13.1 from main zone. So, you know, that's your traditional setup. Um, the next one we've got is a 9.1. And those are to assign all the power amplifiers within the Marantz, you know, to play back up to 9.1 channels, right? So, you can connect speakers for up to 11.1 .1 channels for the main zone. However, speakers to output audio automatically switched for playing back to 9.1 in accordance with, you know, the input signal and sound mode you got going on. So, if you've got multi-channel configuration sound mode, um, you should be able to hear up to 9.1 only, but that's maximum, not 11.1. .1. You can connect 11.1 .1 speakers up to it. You're going to hear 9.1 .1 channel audio, though, at maximum. Um, like I said before, you do that Oro 3D upgrade, it can allow us up to five different separate heights, which is insane with this guy. And we'll do a video on that soon, guys. I've, I've, I've upgraded this, uh, this guy, and uh, we can do that someday. But the next setting you'd run through is a 7.1 and a Zone 2. Um, that's essentially what I got going on right now, or I had previously to pre-outing it into a Parasound preamp and an Emotiva power amp. I had um, the wires going directly into my office so you could play digital streaming direct stuff off of the Marantz NR6, I'm, I'm sorry, 7010 and here in the office, but also use my Elite A20 and I got another um, Emotiva amplifier in there. So this one you're going to use is to assign, you know, you're going to use zone 2 to 2 channel only, but you can connect 9.1 speakers for the main zone. Um, you're only going to get 7.1 channels actually in your main zone. Okay, next one's going to be a 7.1 plus zone 3, right? And here, there you go, 7.1 plus zone 3. And um, that one's going to, you know, do zone 3 to 2 channels, of course, but your main zone will support up to 9.1, as you can see. So, 9.1 for your main zone and 2 for your zone 3. Uh, we'll get to two zones uh, quickly here. So you're going to have 7.1 channels worth of audio in your main zone. However, you can have 9.1 speakers hooked up. Next one's going to be a 5.1 channel plus zone 2 and zone 3. Watch. There you go. Um, that's a basic, basic configuration. However, that allows two zones. So setting the power amp in this one for zone 2 and zone 3 is each two, you know, it's, it's two, uh, two different channels for each zone 2 and zone 3. 
and then it will allow you to do really nothing fun. <laughs> so that's a complicated setup right there. I'm not a fan of it at all. The next one's going to be 7.1 plus zone 2 and 3 in mono, I think, because you're actually blocking out, yep, one of the amplifiers. <clears throat> uh, you're taking all the amplification, you know, of course, and you're setting it uh, to zone 2 and zone 3 for different channels. But so that's going to allow you 9.1 um, in your main zone and allow you 7.1 playback in your main zone. However, that will allow you to do mono in zone two and zone three and still allowing a surround back channel or you know tops, heights, widths, whatever you want, but 7.1 playback channels wise, 9.1 speaker wise in your main zone. Okay, guys, the next one's gonna be my favorite. This is the best part about this Marantz NR, the SR7010, is the 7.1 channel bi-amp setup I had when I first plugged this guy in with my Kef Bookshelf speakers as my wides. Uh, I got a video on it, but I don't think I've posted it yet. As you can see, bam, it's gonna be my favorite one next, 7.1 bi-amp. That's the best one I love, of course. It's going to be a two-channel um, setup for bi-amping, of course. It's limited, as my Pioneer SC97 Elite down the basement can frickin' bi-amp the front twos, the front center and front twos, and I'm not shitting you, the rear surrounds even, or back surrounds. So that can do a lot of bi-amping down there. Um, however, this one's going to be um, for 9.1 channels in your main zone. So 9.1 speakers, but only 7.1 channels um, in the main zone, 9.1 speaker setup. I, I, I said channels, but it's speaker setup. 9.1 speaker setup in the main zone, but 7.1 channels only. So you're just not hearing actual discrete surround sound in those heights or widths or um, surround backs. So um, next one's going to be a 5.1 biamp plus zone 2, I think. I had that one going on too once. Yep. And that one's eh, a little more basic. That's two channels for biamping, of course, but setting, you know, the main uh, Marantz for zone two at two channel. So that's a common one. Um, I'd recommend that, you know, that as well. Next one I love as well, 9.1 channel, but two channel front. That one's a little complicated, guys, see? Um, that one is unique. It's setting the Marantz amplifier for two channel playback to two, you know, to two speakers only. However, you can switch the front speakers when using two-channel playback in either direct mode, I believe virtual, stereo, or multi-channel surround playback as well. Uh, so that's fun. And you can do two-channel playback with uh, the two-channel setting, which um, I've gotten into a little bit on this guy, and uh, it's amazing when doing analog sources. But um, the next one's kind of more or less I got to talk about a little further, guys, because it's unique. Uh, it's the 7.1 two-channel front bi-amp, and I know I kind of talked about it before, but check it out. You got two more speakers in the front there. Uh, that's the original configuration I had in here with my NHT wides and stuff. Um, and that one, oh, that one's unique. That one's unique. It's a bi-amp for two-channel playback up to four speakers, though. So you bi-amp in four speakers. When you can switch the front speakers using two-channel playback and director stereo, um, but that's actually only two-channel playback for, two, for um, you know, you're bi-amping at all. So you're just going to, you're basically discreting two-channel for both fronts. So one, two you got over here, it's going to be the same, you know, channel basically. Not left, you know, not one, two, three, four. It's going to be one, two, one, two, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, Channel-wise, it's going to be more speakers. Next one's going to be a 7.1 channel Plus front B, I'm assuming. Uh, hang on. Yep, that's a 7.1 plus front B. That was a, a mode we had in here as well. That one's going to be a little better. Um, that one's actually setting the, the Marantz amplifier to do the second set of front speakers. So not so a little bit different than the biamp mode. But you can switch between the desired uh, speakers, you know, front A, front B, or front A and B. So that one's my favorite uh, for not biamping. And that one's that's self-explanatory, as you can see. I'm not going to go into that as much. But, um, you know, there's way more to this, guys. And I can't go into it all. The front, height, wide, two. Geez, there's height, one. There's surround, back. There's the layouts, the five-channel surround, back, and front, width. There's five-channel surround, back, default, five-channel, and front, width, five, you know. So it just keeps going on. Height, surround, back. But, the, the, you know, the upgrade to Roro 3D does allow you to use five height speakers. But, um, okay, guys, um, I've talked about this. I'll do post my second video on setting up a surround sound receiver. I will max the Marantz SR7010 out with the Parasound preamplifier and the Emotiva power amp at 90 decibels or over, of course. 
and we'll uh, post some more fun stuff soon. Please subscribe as I will have some uh, other videos back on setting stuff up and me actually doing these uh, power amps and preamp uh, pre-out settings on the Marantz. And uh, we'll talk about uh, hooking up the NR1606 to the SR7010 and giving that a amazing Dolby Atmos uh, surround sound uh, selection. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, take care.